Billy Deck are an apostolic couple who are called to the nations. They teach, preach, heal, and deliver the Word of God wherever they go. In Paris, France, in Ghana, West Africa, in Belize, Central America, in Grenada, West Indies, in Nigeria, West Africa, in China, and in Berlin, Germany. We welcome you to the program today, and our prayer for you is that you will make Jesus Lord of all. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a nice, sultry, hot Pennsylvania weather, but it's a, it's a wonderful time to be here and to have you all out there somewhere uh, tuning in on TV or internet. My title of my Word tonight is hunger, tonight, hunger and thirst. If you're there and you have your Bibles, if you turn into Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. This is a familiar verse of, uh, of, uh, of the scripture there. It's one of uh, several what we call beatitudes, blessings. Matthew 5, verse 6 reads, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Righteousness is one of the names of the Lord. Uh, Jehovah Sitkanu, it means righteousness. So we could say, uh, blessed are those who, uh, <clears throat> blessed are the hunger and thirst after God and after Jesus. So how many people tonight, this, today have uh, our hunger and thirst for God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I sense that here and wherever you're listening from, I sense a, a really a, a hunger for God, hunger and thirst for God. And uh, we're going to talk about this during this session. You are a passion. You are a people who have passion for God. You want to walk closer with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? In the scriptures there are many examples of men and women who are hunger and thirsty for God. Moses is a good example. Yes. Moses was not content with seeing a, bush in, a burning bush or just hearing God's voice or seeing the Red Sea open. He was not condensed with the thunder, the lightning, or the smoke on Mount Sinai. Moses knew there was more. And he was desperate to see God. He was desperate to see more. He wanted to see God's face. And he wanted to see his glory. And in Exodus chapter 33 verse 18, Moses begged God for more. Can you say that? More. Okay. More. Do you want more? More. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. What's the German word? More? Meyer. Yeah, mehr. Mehr. If you're listening from Germany, we'll say mehr. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. <Glory. clears throat> Moses said, I know there's more. Please show me your glory. I want to see your face. But God said, Moses, you can't see my face. You cannot see my glory. For no man can see me and my face and live. But God knew that, that Moses had a passion to see more of him. <clears throat> because of the sin that entered the world in the Garden of Eden, God could not let man see his glory. The Garden of Eden was filled with God's glory until man sinned. And then God put the sin, the man, uh, the man and his wife, Adam and Eve, 
put them outside the uh, garden. But the, uh, Moses, uh, when man sinned, God put them out of his glory. God knew Moses loved him and he wanted to show him his glory. But he says, Moses, I'm going to put you on a rock. And when you pass by, I'm going to put my hand up so that you cannot see my face. But you can see my backside when I pass. And Moses was desperate. He knew that. Are you really desperate as Moses was? Yes. Are you? Yes. All right. Hallelujah. The Israelites, God's chosen people, did not have a hunger and thirst for God. They didn't care about seeing his glory. They stood at the base of Mount Sinai and saw the smoke, thunder, lightning, heard the trumpet, and they decided they wanted a distant relationship with God. They said, Moses, don't speak to us because we might die. You talk to God and then you talk to us. Hey, they... <laughs> Sound like a bunch of people that are afraid. So often, though, we as Christians wish that someone else would talk to God for us. We let someone else stand between us and God. Sometimes it's a pastor. Sometimes it's a spouse. Sometimes it's a good friend, perhaps, uh, to do talk to God for us and let us know what God said. We are afraid to have an intimate, intimate relationship with God. But what it truth is, those kind of folks are not willing to make a real commitment to God. So we need to make a choice. Will we grow in relationship with God regardless of what it costs? Or will we stay where we are, good church members, doing these things that good people do, never knowing what God's best is for us? We're saved, sanctified, satisfied, and set. Now another example of a man who had a great hunger and thirst for God was King David. The Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. When we read this statement that David had a heart like God's heart, I believe this means that David was actively pursuing the heart of God. Are you pursuing God's heart? Yes. Makes you a God chaser. Yes. Makes you feel good, right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Do we have that hunger and thirst for God? Are we willing to pay the price, whatever the cost, to have an intimate relationship with him? Are we willing to do that? King David was willing. We know that uh, we see King David entering in Jerusalem. He was bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. He was dancing and singing and cutting up pretty bad, I think, when he brought the ark back in Jerusalem. This was the second try and they finally got there. And uh, I'm sure there's a big crowd. But he was, uh, he was not ashamed or he didn't care what other people thought. Even though he was king, uh, you know, this was not below him. But in this act he did, he kind of lost some of his dignity, dignity to his wife. His wife saw him coming in and I don't know what he was dressed in or how much or he <laughs> didn't have on. But he didn't care. He was happy. He was to have the, have the ark back in, in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, she, his wife was very embarrassed. And for this, the Bible says she never had any children. I believe it was a curse God brought on her because of her attitude. Yes. If we are to come into intimacy with God, we must have died to our flesh. There was a lot of flesh on her that she was embarrassed. But death to the flesh comes by three things. Repentance, brokenness, and humility. Numbers, Numbers chapter 14, verse 20 says, the glory of God will cover the earth. In fact, the glory of God does cover this earth. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, no flesh shall glory in his presence. God is a holy God, and he cannot have anyone visit him that does, has unconfessed sins. He cannot come into his glory. No flesh can live in his presence. The Apostle Paul said he had to die daily, every day, 
he had to die because of his flesh. Uh, have you died lately? Yeah. yeah? Lately? Maybe yesterday? Today? Not tomorrow. If we're going to get into glory, we have to die to ourselves. We have to get over this flesh that we have. No unforgiven sin can enter into the glory. Only dead men enter into the glory. Only those of us who have died to ourselves. No, God is not after religious people. God hates religion. He's looking for people who are desperate after his heart. He's looking for people who want an intimate relationship with him. He's looking for people who are thirsty for him. He is looking for people who are looking for the blesser more than the blessing. He is looking for those who want the giver more than they want the gift. People who are desperate for his heart and not are, these people are not, who, are, who are desperate for his heart and not his hand. Too much we want what is in his hand and we say, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's not what God wants. That's not the way he wants us to act because he, uh, he, wants, he has promised us many things and he's, he decides uh, what things we get and what things we don't. But he wants to deal with our attitude. Uh, we need to be people who want God for who he is, not what he can do for us. He wants us to press in and live in his glory. When we move in his glory, then we carry it, we can carry it everywhere we go. Oh, two or three years ago, the Lord uh, told me that uh, we talk about a revivals. And uh, the Lord said, the revivals, the Lord's revivals are over. Said, the place that's going to be bringing souls in is out in the workplace, out in the streets. And I believe that's right. We can take this glory with us into the street, into the shopping malls, into our homes, into the schools, the hospitals, wherever we, our feet take us and God sends us, we can go with the glory of God with us. Amen? Is that what you want? Amen. More. 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 All right. We can carry this glory of God with us. And when we do that, this nation will see revival. And we've made a big start right here. Yes. Yes. And it's growing and growing every day. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory. You know, Moses went up on the mountain to speak with God on the mountain. And uh, when he came back, his face was glowing with the glory. And the people had to put a veil over his face. They couldn't handle it. When's the last time you had to put a veil on your face? Yeah. Maybe after a while, but maybe in the more we can get to that point, right? Hallelujah. But we need to have this glory and carry it with us everywhere we go. God's glory must start somewhere. Why not here? I'm just going to ask, I'm going to show it, tell you, it's the first time I've, I guess I'm going to say it. The Lord showed me this morning during prayer time that there was a, the glory of God, the cloud of God's glory was going to hover over this campus. Hover. Visibly, yes, it's a, something that people can, everybody can see, not just the church people, but everybody. And this is a street right outside this church. I mean, there's cars going back and forth all the time. And they would look over here and see this hovering. And it's going to make a difference. I really believe that. I don't know when it's going to happen. He didn't tell me that. But I don't think it's very long off. So it can start. It can start with us. It can go to our city. It can go in the schools. And if we just have this kind of hunger and thirst for God and die every day to our selfish desires, it'll spread across this whole nation. And if it does that, It'll go around the world. It'll do it right over television. Right where you are watching television and on the internet. It can be there. 
You can be seated there and your room may be full of glory right now. So hallelujah. Just hallelujah. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can change the world. <clears throat> there were only 12 disciples. And they changed the world, didn't they? Who says we can't? Amen. Amen. I'm calling you to a hunger and thirst for God. I'm calling yes. you to an intimate relationship to Him. Yes. But it'll cost you something. Yeah. If you want the manifest glory of the presence of God, you have to go through the door of repentance yes. and forgiveness. We see our Lord Jesus when He died on the cross. He made a way for us to enter into the glory. He yes. died for our sins. He took them on Himself. He provided a way that we could the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to, to uh, <coughs> forgive us and to heal us from righteousness, cl cleanse us from unrighteousness, puts us back in right relationship with the Father. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We simply need to repent, turn from our wicked ways, and we have the assurance of his forgiveness. You know, repentance. I want to talk a little about repentance. It's so important. We've been to a place that uh, uh, I won't name it, but uh, when it came time for repentance and call for repentance, uh, the pastor, uh, well, he just wouldn't receive it. He wouldn't let his people participate in it. He said they didn't have to sin. They didn't have to sin, so they didn't need to repent. But, you know, he didn't read all the Bible. That verse about before, I think it's, uh, what? If they... Uh, hmm? First John 1, 9 says, or 1, 8 says, if you, if you uh, say that you have no sin, you're a liar. And then the next verse says, if you come and confess your sin, you're going to be forgiven. Yeah. Those two verses, I never could understand how he got that point. But anyway... Repentance is the door we have to go through with clean hands and a pure heart. Yes, yes. Clean hands and a pure heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Once we have clean hands and a pure heart, we've been forgiven. Worship is one of the keys to the glory of God, the glory of God coming to us as well. So now the glory of God has already, I believe it's here, right here where we are right yes. now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, your manifest presence right here. Lord, we feel it. I believe the people watching uh, and listening are feeling this. Just reach up and feel that glory, that glory that God wants to come down, and he wants to visit, and he wants to come down and habitate with us, live with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can expect every time we come together in, a, in a, 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 a place where the truth is spoken, where Jesus Christ is proclaimed, that we can expect the glory of God to be there. Yes. Amen. And we can expect there are going to be signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes. Amen. Yes. Signs, wonders, and miracles follow the word. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. We had a pastor one time told us that, that if there's not signs, wonders, and uh, miracles following the, the message, the word, it's an illegal meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now we believe that we can enter into the higher realm of glory through our worship. You know, with Psalms 400, I believe it is, it says, uh, enter into the courts, and 100, enter into the gates with thanksgiving, into the courts with praise. And that's wonderful. Yeah. But you know, that's praise, to praise him and worship him makes him happy. I believe that. Yeah. I mean, that's my children. Yeah. They're having a good time. They're honoring me. Yeah. They're thanking me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, but there's a dimension beyond that. And when the, the thanksgiving and the uh, uh, 
praise, somewhere along the way it transcends and it becomes worship. Yes. 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 Now thanksgiving is praise is all for what? Us. It's about us. But now when we get beyond that into worship, it's all about him. Hallelujah. All about him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We've had good worship here this morning. And we believe that was all about him. All about you, God. All about you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for forgiving us and restoring us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I want more, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now I want to talk a little about this dying to self. Now this is an option we have. And this is one I hope we all grab a hold of. And say I want more and I'm going to do this so I can have more. Now this is, uh, someone wrote this, we don't have any idea who wrote it. But I'm going to read it to you. <coughs> and you can determine yourself if you're dead to your flesh. It's, enti <coughs> excuse me. it's entitled to dying to self. When you are forgotten, or neglected, or purposely set at naught, and you don't sting and hurt with the insult or the oversight, but your heart is happy, being counted worthy to suffer for Christ, that is dying to self. Let that soak in. When your good is evil spoken of, when your wishes are crossed, when your advice disregarded, your opinions ridiculed, and you refuse to let anger rise in your heart, or even defend yourself, but take it in all patience, loving silence. That is dying to self. When you lovingly, lovingly and patiently bear any disorder, any irregularity, any unpunctuality, or any other annoyance, when you stand face to face and endure it as Jesus endured, this is dying to self. Jesus died to himself. Jesus came from the heights of deity, heights of divinity, down to the depths of humanity. To come down, he was obedient to the Father, to come down and to give his life for us on that cross. On that cross. Stop and think about it. Stop and think about it. Suffering he went through. He took all our sins. Took all our heartaches. All our infirmities. On himself. And he gave himself willingly. Shed his blood. And he became our sacrifice. Once and for all. Once and for all. I think it's in, in the book of uh, John, I believe. It says the last words that Jesus spoke were, It is finished. And he went from there through the resurrection and sat down at the right hand of the Father. He said, Father, I've done all that you sent me to do. And now he's seated on the right hand of the Father. He's not coming back to the cross. He did everything that he was sent to do. Every need we have has been covered. Every problem we've had has been taken care of. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just have to call upon him. We have to receive him as our personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I am hope if any of you listening to this or here in this place if you have never given your heart to Jesus Christ and made it publicly you need to do that you need to do it now today is the day of, of 
of salvation. Amen. We thank you, Father. Okay, I've got one more here. When you never refer to yourself in conversation, oh, I want to back up one. When you are content with any food, any offering, <laughs> that kind of <laughs> comes home <laughs> when you talk about that offering. <laughs> we, have to, we have to work on that one. When you are content with any food, any offering, any climate, hot or cold, any society, any raiment, raiment, any interruption by the will of God, that is dying to self. Takes a lot, doesn't it? Oh, help me, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. When you never refer to yourself in conversation or to record your own good words or itch after commendations, when you, can when you can truly love to be made no unknown, that is dying to self. Dying to self. A lot of people want to be uh, put up front. When you receive correction and reproof for one of less stature than yourself and can humbly submit inwardly and outwardly Finding, uh, giving up any resentment or rebellion, riding up within your heart, that is dying to self. Yes. Amen? Amen? Are you dead yet in these last days? If not, are you working on it? Yes. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help us. Yes. Help us to work on it. Help us to die to ourselves. Help us to die to our flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to talk a little more about uh, experiencing the glory and hunger and thirst. A passion for God is fundamental. Thank you for being with us today. We believe that the word you have heard will work mightily in you and bring you into a closer walk with Jesus Christ. If you have not asked him into your life, why not do it now? Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And visit our website for helps in your growth. Our website is www.abdeck.org. And write us at Jesus is Lord, Al and Billy Deck, Cedars of Lebanon, Inc., P.O. Box 523077. Springfield, Virginia, 22152, USA. Books and tapes are available of this program upon request and a love gift. Please mention the date and subject of the program. Until next time we say, Jesus is Lord of all.